This is an episode so big, I'm just gonna need to record it, instead of just doing the text dialogue. Anyway, this is Yosarian, and I'd like to talk about a big discovery that happened about a year ago, a full demo of the Robot Factory level of Time Splitters 2, released in May 2002. It contains the full level excluding the boss battle at the end, and then shortly before that, but there's still a lot of neat stuff, not just within the demo, in terms of different mechanics and models, but also within the text of it that you can explore with HXD. Sci-Fi Handgun has its older model. The Time Crystal has its original red model. The Laser Gun has a different mechanic. It, it reloads, it charges quicker, and it doesn't have the shield. And the briefing is interesting, because it mentions some story differences. The Dark Machinist Child is known as the Dark Cyborphin Child, and it mentions his motivation is building a robot army to avenge his parents' death. There are also some other briefings within the game's files. Some of them are just there as placeholders. Cracking open this demo with HXD or any sort of hex editor reveals a lot of text relating to the main game. Some of it didn't even show up in the final release. A good chunk of it, actually. There's all sorts of stuff like early mission briefings and old character names, things of that sort. Some of it's just kind of boring, like uh, the gangsters have very generic names like Grey Suit Gangster or just Big Nose. But others, when you read into them, they're really interesting. Some of my favorites are more Second Sight references popping up. John Palmer, the original name for John Vatic, the game's protagonist, is explicitly mentioned among the characters there. There are also references to locations within Second Sight levels. Not to mention how there are references to pretty much everything in Time Splitters 1, even the cut blue robot character, a lot of the levels from Time Splitters 1, and even stuff like unseen levels, like outskirts. I'm, I don't really know what all this stuff, like there's any evidence of it existing. It seems like the demo just contains the data for Robot Factory, and apparently the rocket launcher, even though that's not in the level. This doesn't seem to be like the Shadow of the Colossus E3 demo where it had everything and you could play the entire game and see all this unseen stuff from an earlier point in development. But still, reading through the text reveals a lot. And I'm impressed with just how much there is you can dig through and see. And of course, the weapon list. Lots and lots of guns. Some might just be existing guns with different names. Like, I'm pretty sure the Magnum is just the Garrett Revolver, only with a simpler name. The Vintage Rifle was called the Bolt Action Sniper back then, because it was modeled off a Lee Enfield a Bolt Action Rifle. And in the files for Time Splitters 2, it's still called Sniper Bolt. But uh, they changed it up because Lee Enfield probably wouldn't fit the Wild West theme. So in order to make sure that they didn't have to make a new weapon, they probably just made the lever-action version. And that still fits, like, the 1920s and all that, so it's not off exactly. But there's also some stuff that doesn't really have an equivalent in the final game. The disc thrower that I talked about in the Iceberg video shows up here, and it can be dual-wielded. The Gatling gun is also another one. Not certain if that's just the normal Time Splitters 2 minigun with a different name, but if so, you could have dual wielded it. Maybe it would have been like the Time Splitters 1 version where it had 64 shots and you could dual wield it. There's also the Uzi still mentioned. It's unclear if that was when the Uzi was actually going to appear in the game or when it got replaced by the SBP 90. Because the. SBP-90 in the game files is still called the Uzi, and since we don't really have a model to work with in this demo, we can only really guess. Reloading the laser gun is just weird. It's not something you would see in a normal game of Time Splitters, too. The assault rifle's still mentioned. 
the one, the FAMAS from Heimsplitters 1, it still shows up in the text files. So I guess they were keeping it around. I wonder where they were going to include it, if anywhere. And the default gun is mentioned too. I mean, I guess that, that was kind of around the entire time. There are no gallery entries though, but that's kind of expected. It might have been a later edition, and in the demo there's no reason to include them since you don't get to access the gallery. There are even a few unused music slots. They don't have any unused songs, but they're just labeled as placeholders. That's kind of fun. But there is a ton in this demo. I like it's a treasure trove of info about Time Splitters 2's development, and I'd really like to dig more into it. There's also an even earlier demo from 2001. I've taken a look through that, and maybe I should revisit it another time. There, and since it's earlier, there isn't as much that's present but it's still cool to look into it because that was when like the tactical 12 gauge was called the assault shotgun and it looked totally different and acted different that was like a weird mix of time splitters one and two but yeah this this demo was just incredible to dig through i was like blown away each time i'd look further into it that's why I decided to do this episode with a voiceover because there's just so much to cover. I mean, I was like, I can't just do this all with a text box. I might as well narrate it so I can get more across without taking up too much time. I would really like to check out a beta version of Time Splitters 2, an earlier version than the one we've gotten. I think the only full beta copy we've gotten is like, a few months away from release. There are some differences, like the silenced Luger being available and the Gothic tile set being available, but it isn't exactly uh, that much different from the final build. I guess that would just... It's just a matter of luck and time, I guess. Free Radical doesn't really seem to mind when people find that old stuff, but considering how long it's taken for some stuff to surface, maybe it'll happen eventually. I never thought we'd get a playable build of Dinosaur Planet, but that's a thing now. So you never know. But I just wanted to share some of these findings with you guys, because they're just so cool to me. And thanks for sticking along and listening to me ramble about this, and I hope you found it informative. I enjoyed looking into the development of Time Splitters 2 and seeing just what all Free Radical had planned over time. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.